and having an amazing Sunday. So in today's video, I am going to be basically catching you guys up with all of the major projects that I have completed in my front yard space. And so what I mean by catching you guys up, so there were some pretty big projects that I completed in the front yard space and these projects were completed in 2023, just like with my previous landscaping projects. And I just wanted to basically just kind of get you guys caught up in all of those projects that I did. And actually, I think this video might be the very last one and we'll be caught up for 2024. And so going forward, we'll be doing all new and interesting and exciting DIY projects. And I have so many planned for you guys. I'm so excited, you guys. So anyway, um, that's what we're going to be doing. So I'm gonna show you guys how I basically transform my entire fences in my front yard space completely by myself. Why not? Okay, <laughs> so yeah, and keep in mind, you guys, um, whenever I do these projects, uh, whether they're large, small, whatever the case is, I always try to make sure I pace myself, you know, take it one day at a time, do a little bit today, a little bit tomorrow. So I don't try to do everything in one day, absolutely not. But anyway, yeah, let's get started. All right, you guys, so we're going to start this video off with another no dig DIY landscaping project. And so right now you guys are actually taking a look at what my flower bed area looked like around my deck space. So as you guys can see, I use the no dig landscape edging to pretty much design an area around my deck space. Uh, and excuse the way this looks, I have to clean this out at some point. <laughs> But yeah, so for a long time now, I've just had the no dig landscaping edging by itself, had the mulching and everything was fine. But I started to notice that whenever a hard rain would come through, that the mulching will sometimes spill over the no dig landscape edging because the no dig landscape edging is no more than about an inch or an inch and a half in height. And by me continuously adding mulching to this space, of course the mulch got higher, it got thicker. So I wanted to give the space a little bit of height. So to do that, I started incorporating these brick edging to the no dig landscape edging. As you guys can see, this is a super simple and easy process. And I chose to put the brick edging inside the no dig edging, but you can also put it on the outside and it looks just as beautiful. All right, you guys, so here's a look at what that space looks like after applying all the bricks to the no dig landscape edging. One of the things I absolutely love about this no dig landscape edging is that it makes the space look crisp, clean, and really, really neat. And this is exactly what I did whenever I landscaped around the mailbox area. I added the no dig landscape edging and then I bought these beautiful brick edging and placed those inside of the landscape edging. And that gave it that really nice, clean look you guys it's beautiful with or without the bricks um, I feel like the brick edging just further heightens the look of that space but you can use it with or without and also you can place the bricks in the inside of the landscape edging or you can place it on the outside of the no dig landscape edging and it's beautiful either way All right, you guys, so now I'm gonna go ahead and get started with the next major project, which includes pressure washing and staining all of the fences in my front yard space, you guys. <laughs> so what I plan to do is work on one side of the fences at a time. So the fences on one side of the house, I'm gonna go ahead and pressure wash that side of it and then wait for it to dry. Usually I like to give it about a week to dry and then I'll go in and start staining after it's been completely dried. And then after that, I'll work on the opposite side of the fences. So I got my work cut out for me you guys this project took about two weeks and again the reason for that was because I had to wait for the fences to completely dry out before staining them because the last thing you want to happen is to stain over your fences while they're still wet and what happens is that stain will trap the water that's in your wood and the wood will start to rot from the inside out so we definitely don't want that to happen
All right, you guys, so the time is 7 p.m. And this is how far I've gotten. Yikes, so I still have a bit to go. So I'm gonna try to do a little bit more because it's getting dark, y'all. Um, so I'm gonna try to do a little bit more and whatever I don't finish up, I'll, you know, do it tomorrow. All right, you guys, so it's the next day and I just wanted to show you my progress with pressure washing the fences so far. So as you can see, I still have a little bit to go yet. So I'm going to definitely finish this up today. And once I've completed pressure washing this side of the fences and letting that dry, probably in, in about a day or two, I'll go ahead and start on the opposite side of the house. But I am going to go ahead and um, just kind of give this, um, you know, about a week to dry out completely. And I'm also gonna pressure wash this gate as well, because you can already then see that kind of moldy look starting to come on the gates. So we're gonna go ahead and take care of that as well. But in the meantime, I wanna share with you the uh, stain that I'm actually using. It's a transparent stain and sealer in one. So I got this from Lowe's, it's by Valspar. It's in the color Canyon Brown. All right, you guys, so it's been about a week later, and so now I'm going ahead and applying the stain after all the boards have dried out. Thankfully, we've had some pretty dry temperatures. And if you guys can't tell, all I'm using is a roller to apply the stain to the fence. All right, you guys, so here's a look at the finished product of the fence. And let me close the gate so you guys can see what the gate looks like as well. But this is just one side, you guys. Don't forget, I still have to pressure wash and stain the other side of the gate, or the fence, I should say. So this is just one side of the house. And I think it looks phenomenal. Look at that, you guys, that looks amazing. Oh my God, I absolutely love this. Oh. All right, so one side of the house is completed. The fence have been pressure washed and stained. That looks amazing, you guys. Love it, love it, love it. OMG. It makes such a huge difference. So I'm gonna kind of walk back a little bit and show you guys what it looks like when you have the house. Oh my God, y'all, that looks amazing. <gasps> I love it. Y'all know I'm over dramatic. This looks so darn good. OMG, love it. All right, y'all, so a couple of quick things I wanna point out about what I added to this gate. And I basically added this for mainly aesthetics um, and just as a way to differentiate the gate from the fence because before, when you walk up to the fence, you couldn't tell that it was an actual gate because it didn't have a door handle or anything distinguishing it from the rest of the fence. So I just wanna show you guys right here. I added these hinges. Now, <laughs> granted, this was not the proper way to add it. Typically, you wanna attach this portion of it to this, and then when you open the gate, you know, this part of it turns or whatever, but I didn't do that because as you can see, my gate is set off pretty far from this, so this wouldn't have worked. And once again, I didn't need this, I just wanted this to add, you know, just a little bit more interest to the actual gate itself and to further distinguish it from the rest of the fence. So that's why I just got some screws, screwed this in, and you will never know the difference, to be honest. And I also added, finally added a door handle. So now, even though I have a double door gate, 
I only needed the one door handle because really this is the only side of the gate that really gets opened. So yeah, just wanted to point that out to you guys and I'll have the information for those uh, linked in the description just in case if you decide you wanna use those or you may wanna purchase it later. I also want to share that later on, I'm actually going to be landscaping around the entire fence area. So that is definitely something that I want to do. That part I'm really excited about. I've actually already started shopping for plants and things like that and just trying to come up with a design. So I have several in mind, but I'm super excited to get to actually doing that. But um, I'll figure something out. But anyway, just want to share that with you guys as well. So for right now, I am going to be adding these hedges around the fence area and in a later video, I am going to be doing a complete landscaping project around the entire fence. you guys so here's the finished look of that side of the fence area and don't forget I still have a whole other area on the opposite side of the house that has to be pressure washed and stained as well Alright, so now we're on the opposite side of the house and guys, oh my goodness, I have my work cut out for me. So the first thing I have to do before I can start pressure washing is I have to trim back these huge hedges in order to get to the fence. So let's get started, you guys. Okay, you guys, so about to get started with trimming these huge hedges. Oh my gosh. So yeah, this one is literally taller than the fence. Yikes, so let's get to it. So thankfully, my dad was kind enough to let me borrow his electric hedger. So that actually came in pretty handy, that along with my clippers, and that's basically all I used to trim back these hedges, which made the job super efficient. Um, I got this done in no time at all. Okay, you guys, so here's a quick look at everything. Once I've trimmed up all the hedges, I raked all the leaves and everything from around the hedges. So I think we're ready now to actually start doing the pressure washing. All right, so I'm probably not going to start pressure washing today because I am a little exhausted. So I'll probably start on that in about the next couple of days. But guys, look at how amazing this transformation has turned out. I mean, there's a nice clear pathway behind the hedges. I love that, you guys. I mean, the hedges are not rubbing up against the fences and this is all the debris that came from those hedges. And after I raked up everything, so I really, really love the way this looks. Now you can actually see the fence. All right, you guys, so it is the next day and I absolutely love the way this fence looked now that I've trimmed back all those hedges. And so today I'm gonna go ahead and get started with actually pressure washing my fence because I have to wait at least for about a week to give the boards chance to dry out completely before applying the stain. So I definitely wanna give it time to dry out completely before staining, so we're gonna go ahead and get started with that now.
So here's one quick look at what the fit space looks like after I did all the pressure washing. So it turned out really, really well, you guys. Let me see if I can get a close up of the pickets. So yeah. And I will admit that I really didn't start this project until like later in the week. I think I started it like Tuesday, but I've checked the bores and you know, they're, they're completely dried out, thankfully. So yeah, we're gonna go ahead and finish this up by staining the front yard fences. Super excited, cause that means that's one less thing to do. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Y'all, it is such a glorious day, so beautiful. The weather is perfect for staining the fences. So that's what I'm going to be doing today is just getting the front yard fences finished up, wrapped up, completed, so we can move on to something else. All right, let's do a time check. Let's see what time it is now. So, so far, I've done all of this portion here. I do have to do that little corner there. I'm gonna have to use a smaller roller for that. But for the most part, this entire area here is completed. So now, I'm about to get started on the pickets. It's like 1.40 p.m. and I started at 12.45 p.m. So not bad, not bad. So now we're going to go ahead and wrap up everything with the pickets and we should be finished. Yay! All right, so here's the finished look at the fences after everything has been pressure washed and completely stained. I absolutely love the way this look, you guys. Oh my goodness. So the only other thing I wanted to do to this space now is add some solar lights. So let's get started. All right, so you can see right here on this table here, I am assembling the solar light post. So I'm gonna go ahead and just, uh, you know, put those together and start hanging them on the um, fences or installing them on the fences before the rain comes through because it's so cloudy, you guys. Oh my goodness. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And if you guys are interested in this, uh, item I will have it linked in the description. This is not a sponsored video by um, by the way So I just wanted to point that out. This is just something I'm sharing with you guys, but yeah, let's go So y'all before I could get started with applying the solar light post I had to remove these little caps off the fence post and I'm already working on removing this one. I Just removed the one from the gate here Here's what that was. Here's what it's looking like. So I just removed that one. So this one was already good. So this is the size cap I'm gonna use for that one. And then of course I have to remove this one. But let me quickly try to get that done because I also have to do the other side of the fence and there's quite a few over there, so yeah.
So as a reminder, this project was completed late October, early November of 2023, which is why you guys see my Christmas decorations are up. All right, y'all, so I am finally finished installing all of the solar fence lights um, and just in time too because it's starting to drizzle just a little bit but y'all know your girl got to keep going until the rain starts to really come down i got to keep going but anyway let me show you guys what it looks like so far so it did take me about i want to say maybe about 30 35 minutes to install all the lights and there were 12 solar lights all together so i don't think that's too bad especially because I had to remove all the caps off the existing posts. So maybe if I hadn't, you know, if I didn't have to remove all the existing uh, caps on the post, then I probably would have done it a lot quicker. But yeah, I still don't think that's bad at all. So yeah. All right, guys. So here is what the lights look like at the moment. And you guys know I'll have to show you a nighttime view as well. But it looks so nice. Now, I will say I didn't have enough to go on all the posts, so I just mainly did it on the ones that are pretty visible. So as you can see, like right here, I still need one here in this area. And then I also need two more to put here and here. So, I need about three more and I'll be able to, you know, have posts or have solar lights on all of the fence posts. But it looks so good, you guys. Look at that. I can't wait to see what it looks like at night. I love the detail in the lights. I think it's so pretty. But yeah, so got that done. All right, so I wanna show you guys what the solar lights look like at night. And you can kind of see them already. Oh my goodness. Would you look at that? That looks phenomenal. Wow. what they look like they look absolutely amazing love it so nice let's go ahead and walk over here and take a look at the ones on the other side where the gate is oh my goodness Ugh. All right, let's see here. So some of them takes a little longer to come on, but for the most part, yeah. There it is, it just came on. <laughs> so yeah, looks really, really good, love it. All right, you guys, so for my last and final DIY project, I wanted to share with you how I completely updated my flower bed area. This was actually done in 2022 in the backyard area. You guys may have remember seeing this whenever I did the makeover on the patio space. So this is what the space used to look like prior to me updating it. Um, I basically used these beautiful gray pebbles. I purchased those from Walmart. I pulled out all the weed and made a nice little clearing space here and I did use weed fabric in this project I just don't have a picture of me putting down the weed fabric but I did use weed fabric so this project was super simple you guys so basically after adding the weed fabric I just went ahead and added the pebbles on top and then a few solar lights and also later on but not in this uh, clip I also added the no dig landscaping to the edging of this um, little area as well. So I did add the no dig landscape edging um, a little later. 
So to further enhance this garden bed, I also wanted to give my brick edging a nice refresh. And so you can see by this point, now I have the no dig edging. You can see that clearly here now. And so my flowers, I came in and so I started painting the bricks and I used um, the Rust-Oleum spray paint and I'll show you guys in a minute what that looks like. But this to me was just such a huge transformation. Um, it took no time at all. Super easy, super simple. I basically just used the plastic bags to cover the rocks because again, this was something that came much later after applying those rocks. But I use again the Rust-Oleum in the um, color Brick Red. And the only tool I used was just an old paintbrush that I had on hand. That was it. So I purchased two cans of the spray paint for this project, but only ended up needing just the one can. And I did apply two coats of the paint to these brick edging as well. And they held up perfectly fine over the years. All right, you guys, so here's the final look of that garden bed after I've refreshed all the bricks, added the stones, and it looks absolutely amazing. And maybe you guys may decide to use this particular DIY in one of your spring garden beds this season. you guys so I just want to say thank you so so much for tuning in to today's video if you found this video interesting if you enjoyed the content please don't forget to give this video a huge thumbs up that would really really help out my channel till then bye now